you touch, you hit a chord here. One of the things that we touch upon in the book is that as parents of little kids and educators of the kids, what we say to them sticks with them. We may forget about it, but it will stay with them and they will hear you in the back of their head as they are making decisions, coming to junctures or crossroads and trying to figure out what to do or how to handle something. They will have that in the back of their head, which is why it's so important as we are parenting or educating our students to be as positive as possible, to give positive feedback. If we want to inspire a change, emphasize what you want the child to do, not what they're doing wrong. And when they become an adult, they'll hear the positive reinforcement in the back of their head or the opposite if you're critical. So yeah, that's, that's something in the book because I remember what my grandparents and my parents said to me and what my teacher said to me. And as an exercise, this is actually kind of fun when, when I was writing this part of the book, very spontaneously, I went into all three of my children's rooms and I said, quick, when you think of me, what do I say to you? Or if you're in a, in trouble or you're at a crossroads and if you do think of me, what am I saying? Quick, don't think, go. <laughs> And they each had an instant reply of something that is in the back of their head that they think of, something that I have said to them. It was fascinating. But they're not the only ones. All the kids, all of us have that, which is why, coming back to your point, you are still parenting. You're just doing it silently from their memory. Okay, welcome everybody to Living the Next Chapter. I have an, another author with me today. Fancy that, an author on an author podcast. And our author today is somewhere very unique that I would love to visit someday. Um, not here in Canada and a little further away from Canada, but uh, Margie's here with me today. We're going to be talking about her book. We're going to be talking, that's coming out April 4th. Woohoo. And we got all kinds of great stuff to talk about on the podcast. Margie, welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you. It is wonderful to be with you, and I love that you live in Niagara Falls. See? Big hill, lots of water. I tell everybody that. Um, but people love coming there and coming to see the falls, so it is it is spectacular to see. And you know where I live. I you? live in the United States, but yeah. I also live in dun, Israel, da, da, da. a good part of the year. Da, 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 da. So shalom nekula, manishma, kol besedah, ni mekevah sheken which just means, hello, everybody. How's it going? I hope everything's going well. So we have listeners in Israel. So thank you. You just brought them to a standstill as they listen to an English podcast. And all of a sudden, that just happened. So that was really nice of you. Thank you for doing that. Uh, my pleasure. And please forgive the very heavily accented American accent on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so where in the U.S. are you when you're back in the U.S.? I am in Pennsylvania, and I'm in Florida because that's where my parents live. Nice. Two amazing places to see. Awesome. I love that. What do you love about Israel that when you arrive and you come through the airport and you get back into the culture, what is the one thing you're just like, this feels nice, this feels good to be here? In the United States? Oh, for Israel. Oh, in Israel. Yeah. I love that. I my favorite part of Israel is the time zone. Okay, really. And that surprises everybody because nobody really thinks about the time zone. But I love the time zone here because we're smack in the middle of it all. So when I wake up in the morning, if I need to get to the Far East, they're still before the end of their workday. If I need Europe, they'll wake up couple hours later, well, London, actually a couple hours later, an hour later for Europe. And then the Americans on the East Coast start to wake up seven hours. So I get a jump start on the day 
And as long as I'm willing to stay up late at night, I can go as long as, hey, West Coast time, which is 10 hours behind Israel time. So if you don't mind a long day and you love being ahead of the game, Israel is a wonderful place to live. That is a unique answer. I did not anticipate that. I like that. <laughs> that is great. That is one of my favorite parts about living in Israel. Yes, the time zone. You know, we in public relations, we put out a lot of press releases. And usually they cross it around seven or eight o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. So when I'm here in Israel, then I have the morning to do any kind of final preparations. When I'm in the United States, I have to prepare things in advance mm. or get up at the crack of dawn. And as if anybody who knows me knows, the morning's not my hour unless it has to be. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you talked on, you just touched on your public relations background. Can you give us a yes. little bit of background on on that part of your your story? Because that I think kind of feeds into your book for sure. Well, I've been in public relations for thirty years. I hate to date myself, but there you have it. And the last twenty, say two, twenty three of them, my specialty has been in medical public relations, and. A couple of years ago, I was sitting with one of my three kids on the couch in the living room, my older daughter, and she said to me, Mom, you know, you made mistakes, but overall, I think you got it right. I think that you should write a book that will help the next generation of working moms to find an easier balance between work and parenthood based on your experience and expertise. And my first thought was shock. <laughs> <laughs> I got something right. Hooray. Yay, I did it. <laughs> Yay. Can I have that in writing, please? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was a really nice thing to say, and I really appreciated it. And after I absorbed it, then I thought, okay, what exactly is it? What did I get right? And when I looked back, I understood that I had used my professional expertise as a PR professional to raise my kids. Now, I didn't know I was doing it while I was doing it. So I went back and I thought, well, what did I do exactly? And I decided that from the start, if I was going to write a book about this, I wanted to be practical about it and be helpful from the start. So I spoke with multiple parents, working moms, actually, of children of various ages. And I said, well, what do you want to know? Hmm. How, what can I answer for you? Because been there, seen it, done it. Y'all yeah. are doing it now. For me, I'm after part one. I'm, you know, at this point, my, my mothering, my parenting is for kids 20 plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... Okay, what would you like to know? How can I help you? And that's what the chapters are based on. It's answering these real questions from real parents today, working through issues, but also, you know, they've got other things covered, but they wanted a fresh perspective, a new approach, something fun that would help them to help their kids to be more confident or with more self-love or resilient or going for something that would bring them success in a fun way. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how I wrote the book. And I use personal and professional stories to show you what I did to answer these questions. And then I show you how. So it's not just what I did, but I wanted you to have something practical. So I show you how, and there's exercises in the book. Now at the end of each chapter, there is a QR code that will lead you to a workbook nice because it's one thing to read it it's yeah. another thing to actually be inspired to do it right so i wanted to give everybody something practical in their hand a real action plan so if you go to the workbook it's an expanded version of the exercises in the book and you can print it and write your answers out, or you can type them in and then print it out. Whatever. You know, it's up to you. Whatever works for you. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. So 
ultimately, even though the questions are kind of universal, the answers will be unique to whoever you are as a reader, because we all come from different backgrounds and communities, and what will work for one might not necessarily work for another. So that's where your special sauce comes in. Mm. But I'd like to give you a new way of looking at things, and that's what these exercises are about. And then if you would like to deep dive even further into the PR parenting practices that are taught in the book, then you have an opportunity to apply for the PR parenting program that will begin in May. Nice. And yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a motto in our family. If you can help, you should help. So I started this program, I'm starting this program to be available and to coach and it's going to be small i am going to enroll up to 10 people and it will be a small private community and there are all sorts of benefits connected to this but at the core of it it's deep diving into the pr parenting strategies and tactics and practices together with me and we'll workshop and figure things out together whether it's really something serious or you just need a new approach to something that you've been doing, but it's working, but you'd like to see something work a little better and yeah. we'll get through it and we'll get through it together. Nice. So for that, um, for that uh, course, getting together with everyone, would it be best for everyone to have read the book prior to coming to the course? Would that be a good suggestion? Up to you. Okay. You can okay. read it the whole book prior. You can even do the exercises prior, or you can do it when you get to the program. Okay. I would recommend reading the chapter assigned for that particular week or the chapters assigned for that particular week. But if you read it after, it's okay, too. You know, everybody works hard, and we all have different time management. And I'm not going to be the kind of coach that says, if you don't do your homework, you can't come to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, 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 no. Well, we'll do this together. We'll do it on your timeline and we'll figure it out together. But like I said, I want to keep this small so that I can give everybody in the program lots and lots of attention. The one thing I heard from another coaching uh, leader once at a coaching session was they said, this is my, my session is not just about coming to receive something as a participant, but I'm encouraging you to come with something to give as well. So it's a two way thing. I would love for you to come and Give your feedback, give your input, but don't be just sitting silently on a Zoom call and, and just watching. I would love for you to contribute. Is, is there an element in your program where people are going to have an opportunity to contribute and, and give their point of view and their ideas as well? Absolutely. Everything that I do is interactive. It is not just me talking into the oblivion. Yes. I want to help, and the only way that I can help you the best that I can is to hear from you and what your perspective is, what you need, what your goals are, what your end goals are, and what's worked for you and what hasn't worked for you in the past and anything else that's on your mind. And then anybody else who's in the program can also contribute to whatever your situation is. So it's ultimately a discussion. It's not a dictatorship. It's a democracy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as you're, you know, as, as the coach, I'll be introducing the public relations strategies and then we can all workshop it together to figure out what's the right answer for you. So we're recording this today on International Women's Day. So happy International Women's Day to you and to our listeners. Um, tell me how important a day like today is for you as you think towards the release of your book and how this book is going to help people. Well, first of all, shout out to all my sisters out there. Mm. Woohoo, I'm you celebrating go, right? you. <laughs> I am celebrating you. Absolutely. Women are so strong. Working moms are so strong. And all moms are working moms, if we're being honest about it. And this is a day to celebrate all of my sisters, all of their achievements all of their skill sets and all of their wonderfulness. And I couldn't be prouder of my sisters out there. In terms of the book, well, honestly, if we go back to the very beginning discussion with my daughter, mm -hmm. 
who came up with the idea for the book. This was originally a love letter intended for the next generation of working moms and my fellow sisters out there. So I'm so excited to be able to contribute and help make your life easier. From an older mom to a younger mom. <laughs> you know, mirror my successes, skip the failures. The hiccups are in the book too. I'm not the perfect mom, I promise you. You know, I did the best that I could like we all do. Right. But there's a saying, if I knew then what I know now. Yeah. So I have documented what I know now so that you can have an easier time at it and do a better job than I did. So that's what all this kind of means to me in the context of International Women's Day. It means that I have an opportunity. I get to pay it forward. And I hope that it really helps all the women out there, whether you're a mom or whether you're an aunt or a sister or a cousin. If you have a kid in your life, this will help you. If you're a teacher, what have you. If you have kids in your life, there's something in it for you. Nice. That's nice. And so one thing from from our my side of the world here, my wife and I are empty nesters. Our children are 20 to 25 range of three of them. Um, I know my wife is curious to kind of get a little bit of your feedback on parenting adult children. In addition to our conversation around the book, do you have something that I can share with my wife, Jennifer? Because we're at this point in our life where we're, we're going from being a parent to being more of a a friend, I guess, or a, a fellow adult person in the room with our adult children. It's a very interesting dynamic. Interesting to kind of hear your take on parenting adult children. In terms of adult children, in public relations, one of the media training techniques that we teach our clients is to listen. Mm. Yes, you have your key messages, but you need to listen to what the reporter or producer or whoever you're being interviewed by is asking you so that you can respond accordingly and guide or share your answer in the best way that you can to actually answer the question. And I think in terms of parenting older children, that's kind of key so that the better we are as listeners, the better our replies and the more we can help. And the more calm we are and more respectful we are in our answers, because they're not little kids anymore, they're adults. Right. They're right. making their own decisions. So if we are respectful in our replies, we have a better chance that our older children will listen and take our advice, hopefully. Because I've noticed as an as a parent with adult children, we've lost some of our leverage points that we used to have when our children were smaller, like go to your room or no television tonight. <laughs> um, my kids don't live here and I can't enforce those types of things. Um, they're on their own now. So I've lost a little bit of that uh, daddy or mommy oomph that I might have had in the past. So now it's a totally different playing field. And we're talking as, again, two adults and they come to me for advice. Great. But then there's days when there's complete silence and I don't hear from them at all. And that's just an interesting which, dynamic, right? Which is okay. And this is actually something that is addressed in the book. Oh, see? Well, there you go. You're good. You touch, you hit a chord here. Good. One of the things that we touch upon in the book is that as parents of little kids, and educators of the kids, what we say to them sticks with them. Right. We may forget about it, but it will stay with them and they will hear you in the back of their head as they are making decisions, coming to junctures or crossroads and trying to figure out what to do or how to handle something. Right. They will have that in the back of their head, which is why it's so important as we are parenting or educating our students to be as positive as possible, to give positive feedback. If we want to inspire a change, 
emphasize what you want the child to do, not what they're doing wrong. And when they become an adult, they'll hear the positive reinforcement in the back of their head or the opposite if you're critical. Right. So, yeah, that's that's something in the book, because I remember what my grandparents and my parents said to me and what my teacher said to me. And as an exercise, this is actually kind of fun when, when I was writing this part of the book. Very spontaneously, I went into all three of my children's rooms and I said, quick, when you think of me, what do I say to you? Or if you're in a in trouble or you're at a crossroads, and if you do think of me, what am I saying? Quick, don't think, go. <laughs> <laughs> And they each had an instant reply of something that is in the back of their head that they think of, something that I have said to them. It was fascinating. Mm -hmm. But they're not the only ones. All the kids, all of us had that, yeah. which is why, coming back to your point, you are still parenting. Right. You're just doing it silently from their memory. Ooh. Parenting silently from their memory. That is, that one's going to stick with me today. I like that. I like that. That's why it's so important that when you're bringing up your kids to be kind, because they will remember it. The kinder you are, the kinder they're going to be. Right. And that carries forward. And that's part of your legacy is how you treat your children and how you raise them. I love it. Yeah. Love it. What is your big hope for this book as it goes out into the world as of April 4th, which is exciting. Um, what is your big hope for this book as it lands on coffee tables, on desks, in backpacks, as people start to consume this? What is your big hope for us as we read it? That is the start of a long-term PR parenting movement mm -hmm. that continues for generations to come. So that 100 years, 200 years from now, PR parenting is still a thing. And that communication skills have become important and a practice that is practiced by all parents and their children and that it continues to be paid forward. Nice. So this is, this is far beyond a single book or a course. This is something where you're really trying to rally parents <laughs> to step into their role and be more effective and more and have their effects be long lasting in their families, right? Correct. This is ultimately generational and hopefully multiple generations. And it doesn't have to end, but it has to start somewhere. And I hope that it starts with all of us. Look, it's not about me. Mm. <laughs> it's not about me. I'm hopefully giving everybody the tools with PR parenting, but y'all take them, use them, mm -hmm. help to inspire your children so that they can inspire theirs and so on and so forth into, into the future. It's very, very big picture, long-term, but you have to lay the groundwork and plant the seeds. And that's what the book is. So long after I'm gone, hopefully people will still be picking up the power of PR parenting and saying, yes, this is our textbook. Nice. And there, there might be other books. There probably will be other books. But David, one thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the voice of my wife just came through my speakers there. One thing at a time, David. One thing at a time. There. So thank you. That was a good. Wow, that was a flashback. Um, okay. So what about who is this book for? Is it for every stage of parenting, or is it more primarily one group of parenting age groups? What would you say? Excellent question. It is for parents of, generally speaking, toddlers to teens, okay. though the earliest story is of me using public relations practices to drop my six-month-old baby off to the kindergarten or nursery school and how I dealt with the separation anxiety, again, wow. using a public relations practice that I use. Mm -hmm. And the latest story is of how my children got into higher education. So it takes you all the way up until, well, they all, all, all 
two out of three of my children have already been through the Israeli military. So they're in their 20s. So it goes past teens. But as a general rule, kids usually go to college around 18 or 19. But um, yeah, it takes you into the 20s. Okay. Can we just pause there for a second? Because when I watch videos of young people in the Israeli army doing their service, they look like they're like 12. And they're walking around all set up in their gear and doing their service. They look so young. And I'm like, I don't think, speaking from a Canadian perspective, I don't think there's a lot of Canadian youth that could have the mentality or maturity to even be in a role like that. I I just, what do you see as a parent by having your children serve? Have you seen an impact on their life by before and after serving? Yes. And it's mandatory. Yeah. So ready or not, as they say, yalla, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. And they go in as kids and they come out as adults. That's the short of it. Because there's got to be train, and, training they go through and life experiences they learn that they might not learn anywhere else. But by going through that, I just see it as... I'm proud to see them serving and just seeing how how eager they are to help and be a part of it. And I understand it's mandatory, but I, I just get a sense that they, they come away with something after service as well. They do. They learn responsibility. They learn communication skills, organizational skills, leadership skills, how to function in a stressful environment. Also, how to contribute and be part of a team. Right. And there's a lot of altruism as well and how to be kind and respectful. Good. There's a lot of good things that come out of serving in the IDF. And I am very proud of my two children who have already served. They both won awards for their service. Nice. And because of Growing up in a public relations house, they were PR parented from the moment they arrived. <laughs> I was very proud when I learned that they were both chosen to be the presenters in their unit when a presentation needed to be given. So yes. I was quite pleased with that. And number three goes in shortly. She's graduating high school and her her turn is coming as well. Wow. Okay. So we talked before we had record that there's a story from from the book. That will help mm -hmm. new parents. I think it's you said chapter two. I'm going by memory. Chapter two, there, there's a little story in there and something that could help parents. I know several new parents that are going to benefit from the next little part of our conversation directly. And they'll be sitting there with paper and pen ready to go to take notes on how to do this. But there's a story in chapter two. I'd love for you to kind of give us a little, a little spoiler. It's not, not too much, but just enough. Um, what is it in chapter two that you have? have their first for young parents. Okay, guys. In public relations, which by the way, is a common denominator for an awful lot of professions out there. So this one will be easy to absorb. There are times when you give a service, but you can't agree with the customer on what the payment will be. Okay. So instead of cash, try bar we barter. You know, they give you a present of some sort or you trade services. You find some way to, if not a money value, a value. That's what you need in your hand. Not necessarily money, but value, correct? Mm -hmm. So I had this exercise with my kids because Look, a two or three, a two or three year old, when you want to get rid of your, the pacifier, you know, you start with the pacifier, which is a, a, in my opinion, and actually scientifically, medically speaking, it, it can be a good idea because it helps to soothe mm -hmm. the child. And according to the experts, which you can, is documented in the book, it can also help to prevent SIDS. Not mine. That's somebody else's statistic. Yeah. But then comes the time where you have to get rid of the pacifier. 
because it will mess up your teeth and all sorts of other things. So how do you get rid of the pacifier without causing a huge hurricane of drama at home? Yes. Right? Because right. if the kid doesn't have their pacifier, sometimes they go ballistic. Mm -hmm. And they're not being brats about it. It's just they need to calm down. And that's their that's their safety net. Yeah. You know, that's what calms them down. Fair enough. But when you say, okay, enough is enough, what do you do? So let's go back to this concept of the barter. I would have my kids take their pacifier and use it as currency. Whoa. And I would say, okay, we're going to go to the toy store next week. And they're having a special that day where you can use your pacifier to buy whatever toy you want. <laughs> Okay, I'm following you. I like this. Okay. And then you talk with your child for a couple of days or a week, whatever you think the right time period is for you. And you talk about what they have in mind for the big shop day. And then you go to the store and you whisper <laughs> into the salesperson's ear what the deal is. You slip them your credit card. And then you go shopping with your child. Now, we all have budgets. So you can say to your child, well, this is the area where the pacifier works. Nice. Or, you know, or, you know, they say, I want this. We say, well, the pacifier is only good for that. You know, so pick mm. from these toys over here. But if they have a toy in mind where it's within budget, then that's great. I mean, my kids went through some version of like a sports car, um, sports cards, you know, Pokemon, sp Pokemon cards. Yeah. Yeah. And, Another one went for a Barbie doll, and another one went for a, a, a like one of those containers of bubbles. And they paid for these toys with their pacifier. They literally handed the pacifier to the sales lady. She rang it up, took the pacifier, put it down, <laughs> put the toy in a bag, and said, here you go. And then while my child was collecting their bag and celebrating their purchase, then she gave me my credit card back. That's it. Nice. Pacifier, pacifier. Gone. That's it. So you didn't now, bring it home with you then from there? No, that was it? No. Well, uh -huh. she, I think she slipped, they slipped yeah. it into my hand and yeah. I put it in my pocket, but that was the end of it. Now, if... My child complained later that they were missing their pacifier. I said, you just used it to buy this fabulous toy. Do you want to take your toy back? No. <laughs> well, there you go. Congratulations. What a big girl or boy you are. Mm. And now you have this toy. And they're very excited about it. So, again, children don't understand money so much, but they do understand value. Yeah. And they value that pacifier a whole lot. So instead of taking the pacifier out of their hand and saying that's the end of that, put something else in their hand. And this is a exercise which is fun, entertaining, shows them value, the concept of barter and value. Yeah. And where they feel like they got something in return. It just wasn't taken away from them and told to deal with it. And it's like a graduation almost. It's like a grad it present, is. right? It's a it's a rite of passage. Yeah. You turn it into a rite of passage that's fun, entertaining, and full of love, as opposed to something traumatic. I love it. That, that's, 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 that's a the great, Passover. That that's a great way to do that. I love it. So there you go. So that's one little snippet from this great new book, and everyone's gonna need to go in and grab it um, because there's more, right? There's so much more here, right? Oh gosh, there's 10 chapters of stories. I think that there's in in the I think I saw that there's 220 pages in in book form. Wow. There's and everything's stories, David. And I like I told you, it's conversationally written. So just how we're talking right here, that's how you're going to read the book. You will hear my voice if you're listening to this right now. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, let's chat, let me share my hindsight with you and Let's have a giggle because a lot of this is funny and forgive me, but I'm sarcastic. So as you're reading, you're going to hear my humor in here. 
<laughs> I love it. So the book is available right now for pre-order, I believe, right on Amazon. It is. It's available for pre-order, Kindle, hardcover, soft uh, paperback, Good. and eventually, I think in the summer, a little bit after, an audiobook will be available too. Oh, are you going to be voicing your own audiobook? Or are you going to have someone do that for you? Jury's out on that, buddy. <laughs> okay, because I love yeah. listening to an author's voice because an author will add inflection and highlight things in the book that maybe an, an actor might not be able to do as quite as well and. You have a great voice, and I would listen to you for days. So that's my vote. If I have a vote, it's my vote. So just so you know. You're very kind. You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Or maybe maybe your oldest daughter might read it. Maybe. That would be one. You could just sign her up, pay her. I could, but she's busy. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert. She's in medical school. She's got other fish to fry right oh, now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Well, she's busy. That's good. Um, okay, so... The Power of PR Parenting is the name of the book. And here it is, How to Raise Confident and Resilient and Successful Children Using Public Relations Strategies. What is one PR tip that we can use today, Marji, for our family? A PR tip that we can implement right now today to help our family. Any, I'm leaving it wide open. Anything you'd like to give us? In public relations, no matter what the day brings, we keep our calm and our sense of humor. And with those two tools in our hand, we can get through anything the day will bring. Hmm. A good combination of those two things. You wouldn't blow up at the office. You don't yell at your clients or mm. your colleagues or mm. your boss unless you have... <laughs> another outcome in mind <laughs> yeah so when you come home and you're with the kids or if you're working from home and you're with the kids remember that they're your clients and colleagues and part of your team too and give them the same respect that you would to the people in your professional world because ultimately your kids are going to be the ones taking care of you someday so be nice to them nice. <laughs> And there's a there's a negative connotation to the idea of bringing your work home with you in the sense that, you know, you're never off the job. You're always busy and your family sacrifices for you. But there's a twist to that statement about not bringing your work home with you. You have a little different take on that. And there's a, an advantage of bringing your work home. Can you kind of summarize that for me? Absolutely. David. We all have superpowers, and generally speaking, we use them in our profession, whatever we do. Yeah. And I say, rather than leave your superpowers at the job and right. completely separate the office from home, I say bring your superpowers home to benefit your children as well. Now, that doesn't mean bring the stress from the job or whatever stories are going on you know, and all that kind of nonsense. I mean the actual skill set that you have that makes you special, that makes you wonderful, that makes you unique. Put on your cape and come home and be that super mom or dad that will inspire your children to adopt the same skills that you have. And they don't have to do it perfectly. Just give them an opportunity to try and have the experience. But use them to guide your children to be their best selves. That's what I did with public relations and what you can do with whatever your superpowers are. And that's it right there. Margie, that was great. That's great. Okay, so let's let's get everybody the all the information on signing up for this course uh, to be a part of the community. Again, links to your website. We're going to put all of this in the show notes. But how do people connect with you? Where's the most, where are you most active online? I am active on Instagram at Margie Haddad, M-A-R-J, like Jerusalem, I-E, H-A-D, like David, A-D, like David. So Margie Haddad. I'm also on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And the book portal is www. Period, P -R -F O R period life. So P R four period life spell out before. Okay. And that's for the community to join the 
PR Parenting Community. It's also where you can find the program page to apply to be part of the PR Parenting program that starts in May. And if you just want to reach out to me, there's a form that you can fill out and write to me. Say hello. Tell me what's on your mind. Let's be friends. Nice. Awesome. Margie, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. And I love listening to you. I love the smile. I love the um, the passion for what you're doing and the fact that you really want to help parents, not just this generation, but beyond. So if you're a young parent or you are going to be a parent, you have someone in your family that's going to have a child coming up soon. This is the perfect book to get as a gift to that new parent that they can start their, their parenting career off on the right, right foot and put those power of public relations to work for you at home. It's exciting. And I think it's a, it's a very novel idea. There's a book term there, novel. There's the novel idea that you've come up with this, Margie, and I'm really happy to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, if I can just add one other piece Please. of information. Please. When you look at the book cover, it's a picture of the sky. The reason why I chose a blue sky with pretty white clouds is because that is something that we all share and have in common. I wanted everybody to be able to look up to the sky and look at this book and know that it, there's something in it for them, that the sky is the limit with PR parenting and that you will find the answers in here in a calm and peaceful way. Nice. And the sky is something we all have in common. So That's I correct. I, I didn't want it to speak to just one community, which is yeah. why I didn't choose a family picture to go on it. Right. I wanted it to speak with everybody, to speak awesome. to everybody, and to be something that everybody can benefit from. It's universal. Beautiful. So that's all the information. Everyone, please go check out the show notes for everything. Margie, thank you for your time today and for including us in, in this. I really appreciate it. Everyone, please head over to the show notes and you'll find all the information there. Margie, thank you for being here. Ta-da, ta-da, Raba. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for being part of the podcast again. Appreciate you investing time in the show and you for listening this far. Thank you. One thing to keep in mind is we are looking for help and some support for the podcast. If you are able to help support our show, our little podcast show here, we can go over to livingthenextchapter.com and all the instructions will be there to help support the show. It takes about 30 to $40 a month to do this just for the hosting and all of that other stuff that we pay for. But if the show is giving you any value and you're and you're enjoying what's happening here, would love any kind of support that you can offer. That would be great. And you being here and sharing the show helps us grow, helps us get great new authors on the show, connect with other listeners and build community. So whatever you can do to share this show today, I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here on for living the next chapter. And I can't wait to share the next one with you. Talk soon. Have a great day.